Hi guys, this is Megan from the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to give you some of my tips for surviving prodromal labor. With this little boy's pregnancy, I had three weeks of prodromal labor, which is quite a bit. <laughs> and so I've learned quite a few tips and tools along the way to make it a bit easier and to not go absolutely crazy and to get some rest. And so I hope these tips are helpful for you guys as well. And let's get right into this. First, let's clarify what prodromal labor actually is. Prodromal labor is a kind of labor that happens prior to the onset of full labor. A lot of people consider it a false labor, but this is a misrepresentation. The contractions are real, but they just start and stop. So basically, it's real labor in terms of the intensity of contractions and the pain, but it just comes and goes and there's no rhyme or reason to it and it seems like you should be making progress but you never actually go into full labor. Sometimes prodromal labor can start and stop at the same time of day which it did for me. It would start in the morning as soon as I got up it would last all day and then it would stop about an hour after I went to bed for the night and that's a pretty extreme case. Normally it wouldn't last for that long, like three whole weeks. Some people can have it just for like an hour a day and it only lasts for a few days before they go into real labor. But for me, I had it every single day, all day for three weeks, which was pretty frustrating. <laughs> a lot of moms, even experienced ones and including me, will call their midwife because it really, really seems like active labor and so I texted my midwife so many times thinking for sure labor was starting, only to have them stop at the same time every day and yeah. my midwife is really experienced and she, so she kind of knew that it's prodromal okay. labor and she would just instruct me to get in the bath or something to let her know if it picked up or the contractions changed. But believe me, it can be really hard to tell when real labor starts. I actually didn't even know I was in real labor until I was in transition because I only had a two hour labor with him and so it was only half an hour of active labor and that whole half hour I was completely doubting whether or not I was actually in labor because those contractions felt exactly like prodromal labor contractions. And it wasn't until transition when it got crazy intense that I actually knew it was real. And because of that, the midwife didn't even make it there in time. <laughs> and sometimes people can also make the mistake of confusing prodromal labor contractions with Braxton Hicks, but they are quite different. Most women experience Braxton Hicks contractions some, at some point during their pregnancy. I tend to get them starting at 20 weeks and all the way through to the end of my pregnancy. But these contractions are just a tightening of the stomach. Your stomach will get really rock hard and it feels a lot different than a real contraction. But they rarely last for long periods of time and they don't increase in intensity and the spacing in between them can be really irregular. And it's also possible to stop Braxton Hicks contractions if you if you get something to drink or you eat or you change your position or you lay down, if you just do something different. It's possible to stop the Braxton Hicks where you can't really stop prodromal labor by doing some of those things. Prodromal labor can be like getting you somewhere. It can make quite a bit of progress in dilating you, which I'm pretty convinced that's why I had such a fast labor with Demi is because I had had, had three weeks of those prodromal labor contractions and I'm sure that it dilated my cervix quite a bit. The second labors typically are faster, but two hours is pretty crazy. So it can be your body's way of preparing you for real labor. It can be a sign that the baby's maybe in the wrong position and your body's trying to move the baby into the correct position. It can be from a pelvic or uterine abnorm abnormality or it can have to do with emotions or anxiety or even a third pregnancy which obviously this wasn't my third pregnancy so sometimes it just happens and it doesn't seem to be for any reason but those can be some causes of it. So now let's get into my tips. So the first thing is to just remember that you're not crazy. This was really hard for me because every day you feel like you're going into labor, they're very real contractions, and after a while, you just kind of feel like you're gonna go insane. It is such a mind game. Every time the contractions start, you get your hopes up and you start thinking about, oh my goodness, I could meet my baby in just a few hours from now. And you start getting excited about starting breastfeeding and snuggling the baby and start picturing all these things. And, and then they just stop and you're like, oh my gosh, it could be weeks before I meet the baby. So that part of it is very frustrating. You'd think that after three weeks of this, I would have like gotten it down and gotten really good at not getting my hopes up. But all the way up until the end, I had a really hard time not getting my hopes up every time. I do feel like it was good for me to learn a little bit of patience. And I feel like in my next pregnancies, it'll be easier as it gets up to the end, even if I have prodromal labor to 
just not get too caught up in wanting it to happen like right away. So I think it was good for me overall, just learning a little bit more patience. And I did have some good days where I had gotten my mindset really good and I was able to just be patient and not get my hopes up too much, but a lot of the days were really hard too. <laughs> but it really helped to research it just a lot about fragile labor, talk to people that had gone through it before, just knowing that I wasn't the only one who felt this way just really helped me feel better about it. Just remember you aren't crazy, the contractions are real and can be painful and they will eventually lead to you having your baby in your arms. My next tip is to embrace the contractions. This was such a helpful thing for me. Every time I would get a contraction, whether or not it was painful, I would just, instead of thinking, oh my gosh, this hurts so much, I wish I wasn't having all these contractions and having negative thoughts about it, I would just think like, bring it on or yes, like like just hoping for it to get more intense and just like, you know, just like embracing every contraction and just changing my mindset about each one. Mindset plays a huge role even in labor, just changing your thoughts from negative, like, oh my gosh, this hurts so much, I just want it to end, to yes, I want this to happen, I want this to get more intense. It totally changes how you feel pain. It can totally make turn it from actually painful to a lot more manageable because then you are just allowing your body to fully work and do its thing instead of kind of getting in its way by being afraid. The third tip is to practice for real labor. There is kind of a silver lining to having all these contractions and that is that you get to practice a lot managing contractions. I know this isn't a huge comfort in the middle of the night when you'd rather be sleeping but I feel like having so much practice learning how to relax and manage the contractions helped me so much when labor actually started. I had, again, a just super fast two hour labor, so the contractions during my labor were so intense. And I feel like I probably wouldn't have handled it as well if I hadn't had three weeks of practicing relaxing through contractions. You can breathe, try to relax or move around or just find whatever works for your body. Whenever I got a contraction, no matter where I was, I would just stop and focus on relaxing all of my abdominal muscles. I would breathe in and kind of expand my stomach as much as I could, feel like the muscles stretching. And as the contraction would get more and more intense, I would just think in my mind like, yes, yes, like bring it on. And it would, I could actually take the pain of the contraction and turn it into just intensity. And doing that really works, even though it sounds absolutely crazy, you can actually change the feeling of pain in your mind into intensity instead of pain. The next tip is to do a lot of yoga and stretching. Since prodromal labor might possibly be caused by baby being in not a super optimal position, doing some pregnancy safe yoga poses and some different stretches can actually help move baby and that can actually help get labor started for real. So it can either calm down these early contractions or it can help speed them up and turn it into real labor by getting baby to move their position. Spinning Babies has a lot of good articles and tips on different things you can do to move the baby and I'll link them down below. I'll also link some different pregnancy safe yoga videos and different things that I use during pregnancy. I am a huge fan of yoga in general anyway. Not like all the clear your mind stuff, but just the actual poses, just because they make my body feel really good. My hips are super tight in general, so I did a lot of different poses and stretches at the end of pregnancy to try to loosen my hips up. And even if it doesn't, stop the contractions or get labor actually started. Just being a bit more loosened up and flexible in your joints can just help you feel better and that can just help your mindset and just make the contractions a bit more manageable too. Next thing is to rest when you can. Resting is a really hard part of this whole situation because sometimes people can have these contractions at night and you might have little kids running around during the day so you can't like take naps. So I get that this can be super hard, but any chance you get to rest take the opportunity, especially if you're having these contractions at night. I was really lucky to have them throughout the whole day, but then they would stop about an hour after I went to bed, so I was actually able to sleep. Other than just the regular pregnancy aches and pains at night, I didn't have a lot of the contractions at night. So just make it a priority to not overdo it and to rest as often as you can during the day because that's really going to help keep your energy up for when labor does start and also just maybe less than the intensity of the prodromal labor contractions. Take a warm bath. This can really take the edge off of these contractions and just help you really relax. They will loosen up all your sore and tight muscles and I personally love baths when I'm pregnant. I'm not a huge fan of baths any other time, 
I like showers when I'm not pregnant, but when I get about to the second trimester and definitely when I get to the third trimester, I love taking warm baths. I love making a bath salt with some Epsom salts and pink Himalayan salt and some essential oils and adding it to the bath. That just really makes it extra special. I will link my bath salts video down below for you guys. Plus, if these are just Braxton Hicks contractions, a bath can actually help them stop. Stay hydrated and nourished. Often after having prodromal labor, women can have really, really short labors like I did. So it's important to stay hydrated and nourished so that you have enough strength to go through labor when it starts. Exhaustion is one of the toughest parts of labor, especially when you've been prodromally laboring for so long. I know that was the hardest part of my daughter's labor. It was 24 hours and by the end, I was just so tired that I couldn't really manage the contractions very well. I personally try to drink a gallon of water a day. No more than that, because it can be dangerous if you drink more than a gallon. I make sure I'm eating high quality fats and proteins plenty of greens, and a lot of fermented foods. If you're not getting enough fluids, the strength and intensity of the contractions can actually be worse. Plus, with how close you are to meeting your baby, hydration is very important for breastfeeding to get started well. And I know the annoyance of these contractions can make it hard to want to eat, but it is really important to stay nourished. As long as you can get some nutrients in you, it's gonna be a lot easier. Drink some red raspberry leaf tea. I talk about red raspberry leaf tea so much. It is one of my favorite herbs. Red raspberry leaf has an important place in traditional folk medicine for its use as an herb for women, especially during pregnancy. I take it throughout my second and third trimesters just to prepare my uterus for labor. And I also take it afterwards to help with recovery and I take it on my periods to help ease menstrual cramps. Herbalists have found that red raspberry leaf acts as a uterine tonic and can actually prepare your body for birth and shorten your labors. So it can strengthen the uterus and actually make contractions more effective, which can help bring your baby to you sooner. I have a whole video dedicated to my pregnancy tea where I go a lot more into detail about why the red raspberry leaf herb is so great for women's health and I will link that below as well. The next tip is to feel free to check with your midwife or your doctor if you're using a doctor. I felt embarrassed to keep bothering my midwife to just ask her opinion on if she thought labor was starting and this is really what they were there for is to help reassure you and to help you through this. I felt like I should maybe have this figured out since it's not my first pregnancy but honestly that's what they're there for. Each pregnancy is so different and can be so reassuring to check with your midwife and just make sure that this is normal and that you have nothing to worry about or that you should just keep waiting or she had a lot of good ideas for me. She would mainly advise me to take a warm bath and eat something and drink something and that was just super helpful. So let's talk a little bit now about why I think pregnant labor can actually be a good thing. And although these contractions can seem totally pointless and frustrating, so many women who have prodromal labor have such faster labors. And I know that my son Dimmy's labor was a dream. Even though the contractions were really intense because it was so fast, I really enjoyed his labor. Prodromal labor certainly doesn't guarantee a shorter labor, but it certainly helps. And my last tip for you guys is just try to focus on the fact that even if you aren't in active labor yet, the contractions are preparing your body and might make things easier and faster when real labor starts. And so those are all my tips for prodromal labor. I hope this was super helpful for you guys. And if you have any other questions about it or anything else pregnancy or birth related, please feel free to ask me down in the comments below. I am absolutely obsessed with everything that has to do with pregnancy and birth and motherhood. And so thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Thank you.